voice you hear is none other than my guest this week, Ms. Jacqueline Steele. My good friend, she's a musician, an author, she just finished a new book, she's got a podcast called Self-Discovery with Jacqueline Steele. You can find out all about what she's up to at her website, JacquelineSteele.com. I'll link that below for sure. And she has no idea that I'm using this track as bumper music, but I'll post the whole thing at the end of the show, so stick around and enjoy Oh yeah, how about that bumper music? <laughs> that is jamming. That is some good bumping bumper music. I don't know why they call it bumper music, but mine is the best. <laughs> Welcome. I don't to- even know what bumper music is. <laughs> is that like the cars outside? Well, bumper music is the music, uh, the intro music that people play at the beginning of their podcast oh. or show. And I don't know why it's called I'm that. I'm so down on, I'm like, I don't know anything about the podcast It's lingo. just nerdy production stuff. You know, mm. I think they call it that in TV and stuff too, you know, like sure. it's a show, you know, a game show and they have bumper music that's gotcha. like Kirk Alpert and the team yeah. on brass or whatever. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so that's what bumper music is. So. I love that you just looked at me like totally sincere how about that bumper music and it's silent in here and i was like what the heck is he talking about i'm going to put some in i'm going to put some and that's gonna make it i know even better. i'm putting two and two together yeah. but your face i wish people could see your facial expression when you said that to me well i am here this is bootsy Greencast because i don't have a better name my name's owen hunt and i am here with Jacqueline Steele. hello everybody uh we are going to talk about all kinds of stuff today spirituality Jacqueline is uh a musician, um, a marketing and creative uh, designer, uh, a woman of many talents, truly, <laughs> and a good a friend woman of, of mine. the night with yeah. many talents. Oh <laughs> That's where I feel like that was going. Don't get too many ideas out there. She's already being harassed on Instagram like crazy. <laughs> we need to keep things to a minimum. <clears throat> But we are good friends. We've known each other for what, two or three years now? Like yeah, that? it's gone so fast. It has though. gone fast. It yeah. has gone really fast. And it's awesome. And uh, Jacqueline's husband, Sam, is also a dear friend and just an amazing He's a good dude. Being. Yeah, he's he's awesome. He's a real good dude. Salt of the earth. Uh, and I'm really happy to have you on this, my new podcast. I'm um, so excited that you're doing a new podcast. I've been waiting for this. I am, truly. I'm excited about it too. Uh, you know, I've, even people have hit me up and been like, why don't you just do your own? And I was going to do this in addition anyway. Yeah. And just like, and just add another podcast to the like three yeah. that I was doing before. But I think this is going to be more fun for me personally. Yeah. You know, I hope that people like it, you know, and you know, I'm <clears> so excited for you because I feel like this is where just as your friend, things have been heading for a long time. And I feel like you're in a headspace now where you're going to be so honest and so real and so you on this podcast. And I don't think there's any greater gift than being your truest self and sharing what you're learning along the way. Well, I think that's what spirituality ultimately oh, is right like yes. that's what we that's why we learn all this vernacular all these vocabulary words yeah. and have these big words and definitions and go to conferences and buy yeah. books and yeah. all that it's really we just want to be our most authentic expression of ourselves yeah. and that's what spirituality the, is yeah the highest version of ourselves that we can be and i think i love this new age spirituality where we're not trying to be gurus to other people anymore we're trying to be our own gurus like i want to be my best guru to myself i don't want to try and have a following of other people who subscribe to my version of spirituality i want to share what i'm learning and share my failures and my vulnerabilities because i feel like that's connecting and it makes us feel less alone versus like the old to me, the more antiquated spirituality, which is I'm already living on this high level. Look at me. I don't really air any of my mistakes or if I do, it's in a way that feels canned and I'm worthy of following. So just subscribe to whatever I have going on. I just don't think that people want to be a part of that kind of stuff anymore. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't see the appeal, you know, like when I first got into it, yeah, maybe a little just because I was new to it. But it, it ultimately, as you go down the rabbit hole, it's just the church again. Yeah, It's just it organized is. religion again. Mm-hmm. And we see all these spiritual movements having all these, you know, 
big issues over and over and over again. And it's just a pattern that's repeating itself. It's because somebody's putting their self at the forefront of the movement. And that doesn't need to be the case. We're all individuals. No. We're all our own guru. And, and I think we need to put the collective good at the beginning of everything. Like what's best for other humans? What is best for me in this moment versus like, how can I be the most impressive? And I think in some ways, this is a very complicated issue that I'm boiling down into a very simplistic answer, but I think some of it has to do with perfectionism. You know, in religious circles, leaders kind of need to be seen and perceived as perfect or some kind of version of perfect in order to be taken seriously. And I'm so over that because there is no human that I have ever met on this planet that is perfect or does things perfectly every single day. I just don't think this human form is capable of being like that. Yeah, we all shit. Yeah. You and know? I so I so crave not the details of the shit, oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> but the details of somebody's life who I'm doing a comedy show later. So <laughs> 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 do do so we can talk about that <laughs> um i just so crave people telling me the i talked about this in another podcast recently instead of going from point a to point b i want people to tell me how they got from point a to point c and the b part like the middle part is always the most interesting to me because that's the stuff that people talk about the least and it's the like on your knees, crying, how the, can I swear on your yes, podcast? You can yes, you yes. I love to swear. Yeah. <laughs> how the fuck am I going to figure this out and what am I going to do next? Those are the stories that I'm interested in because that's to me the beauty of humanity. It's we can go from totally shattered to crazy powerful human beings over and over in our lifetime but a lot of the time we only talk about the shattered part or we only talk about the powerful part i like to talk about the in between that's cool let's talk about some of that let's yeah. talk about a little bit of that with with your um with your music because when we first met i was bartending mm. i was bartending at uh last resort and you came in and, and with sam's parents and they were so cool and and uh we, we were joking around <laughs> and that's how we met the first time and then i was bartending again and then you and sam came in and had dinner at the bar yep. randomly of course yeah. and then randomly were, but not randomly not so randomly yeah. and then you were like yeah you know i'm a musician but i just don't know what you know i'm doing right now i'm yeah. kind of in limbo and i was like well i can help you record oh, i'm and so i'm so glad that you brought this up because i feel like sometimes and i hope this doesn't sound pretentious in any way because i don't mean for it to but i think sometimes people assume that I have things figured out and so often I'm making shit up <laughs> as I go on the fly. Sure. Like, I, you know, I want to completely debunk any kind of veil that says I have my shit together. There are moments where I have my shit together for sure, but there are so many in between periods where I'm like, I have no idea how I'm going to climb this next mountain. And that night when we went in and you were there, I had just told Sam I have this music that I have to record, but I have no budget to record it. I don't know who I would want to produce it. I don't even know where I would record it. And within, I don't know, a very short period of time, I sat down and you were like, oh yeah, I have a new recording studio and I need some marketing help. Why don't we talk about working together? And it's interesting in life how I feel like when we make an intention and pal Paulo Suela, the writer of The Alchemist, talks about this a lot, but when you decide to do something, the whole universe conspires with you I love it. to make it happen. And I genuinely believe that because those times where I have just uh, metaphorically jumped off the cliff, that's when the coolest stuff happens, when I have absolutely no idea how it's going to happen and no control. I feel like that's my way of saying, okay, God, okay, universe, I am giving this idea to you and trusting you to help me make it happen. And 
I can't remember a time where that has ever failed me. Mm. It's led me in directions I didn't think I was going to go. Sure. Um, and it hasn't been easy always, but the results have always been something that I'm so deeply grateful that I've experienced. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. I, I can totally relate to that. You know, like yeah. I find myself in a position where I'm like, how the hell did I get here? Yeah. You know, and then someone the other day I was on a call and they were like, you know, I know it doesn't feel like it, but you're actually on the path of least resistance right now. Yeah. And it doesn't feel that way. It feels yeah. like things are grinding and so hard, but truly water's always making itself flat. Yeah. Always, you know, and taking yeah. the path of least resistance. And if we allow the universe to sort of organize things for us, it's much mm. better than we are at considering all the factors and variables. Yes. And I think that going off of what you were just saying about water, one of the words that keeps coming up in my life is flow. Mm. Because I think for the first, really until I was like 30, I held on to everything with such a tight grip that there was no flow. I felt like I had to work my way into and out of everything. And as you and I know now, that's not really how things work. Yes, we have to work hard, but we don't have to work ourselves into an exhaustive state all the time. Mm -hmm. We can co-create, I love that word, co-create, with God and with the universe, with the path of least resistance toward our goals and not be breaking our backs in the process. And so that word flow just keeps coming up in my life. And I, like, even just for an example, let's say I'm sitting down to write a blog post and I start and everything feels good. And an hour in my eyes are getting itchy. I'm losing my train of thought. The old me would be like, I'll oh, push through. You've got to finish this blog post. The new me goes, Oh, you need a break. <laughs> Go get yourself a LaCroix yeah. and take a walk around the block and give yourself a little bit of a break. And then I do that and I come back and it's, I'm in the flow again. So I think it's a matter of like paying attention to our circumstances, paying attention to our bodies and what they need. Um, and respecting that. I mean, how often have you gone throughout your day and just not respected what your body needs or what your heart is telling you? A lot. And I think yeah. our culture glorifies that. It does. Like ignore your emotions, right. ignore what your body needs. You don't need sleep. And to me, oh, it's virtue to suffer. It's virtue. And I think that is such bullshit. Yeah. I think that I show up so much more fully and wholly and in a way that brings value to other people when I'm well rested, when I've eaten well, when I've taken care of myself, when I've exercised, when I'm loving myself enough to be able to fully love others. It's so interesting how that works because I feel like our culture teaches us the opposite. It does. Yeah. And it emphasizes it over and over and over yeah. and over again too. It's yeah. not just, but yeah. Um, so yeah, so let's talk about how that maybe played out with you making your uh, your singles, I guess. Like, yeah. Because it was originally, it was going to be like an EP or something yeah. like that. Yeah, totally. We went through. Totally. And, and I've shape-shifted so much. <laughs> I love that word, by the yeah. way. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like you're going to turn into a lizard right here. <laughs> I might. <laughs> you just never know. <laughs> yes, a woman of many talents, as I said at the <laughs> top of the show. <laughs> oh, um. Yeah, I mean, I was going to release this EP at the end of last year. So it has been a full calendar year. And I've talked to you a little bit about this off microphone. But the end of last year was the beginning of a really tough period in my life emotionally. And when I released the single Mississippi Center after it was out and I had promoted it for a couple of days, I was like, I'm out of gas. Like, I am literally done how on earth and any of you have launched something before publicly you know it requires a lot of steam I was out of steam and then I had this huge family falling out and then my grandmother died and then I went to Dubai and my time in Dubai was really tumultuous because the person that I was traveling with was not stable and so I was in the Middle East with somebody who was I mean, I don't want to accuse her, this person of anything, but it was a really unstable, unsafe situation. And I didn't know from one moment to the next what was going to be happening. 
Um, and I got back and then was thrown into a bunch of other things. And then Sam and I, with our businesses, we're both entrepreneurs. Our businesses have been, this has been a year of growing pain. So financially it's been stressful. Um, I didn't have the juice to release this stuff, but the cool thing about all of this stuff happening in a simultaneous fashion is that it broke me in the best way. And that breaking down and that discomfort squeezed out a lot of the self-limiting beliefs that I had. And I realized when I actually leaned into my pain and faced it, that I have been doubting myself and my worth and my value this whole time. So had I released those songs last year, I would have tried to promote them, but in a way where I wasn't fully showing up for myself. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I do. That feeling of like, this is cool and I'm proud of it, but I still doubt myself. And am I good enough? Do I have what it takes? And now I'm kind of at the point where... I don't want to say I don't give a fuck what other people think because of course I want to be kind to other people. I want to be conscious. I want to be aware. But now I'm at the point where I'm, I know my intention in creating something and my intention is to bring joy to people. It's to bring connection. It's to be authentic and real and raw and honest. And if people misinterpret that, even if it's a family member, which is what has usually happened and has held me back, I have to say, I wish you well, but your opinion is not going to thwart my efforts anymore. And it took me breaking down and peeling back those layers to get to this point of being able to say, now I'm ready to fully show up for myself. And I have never in my life done that. It's been like 80%, 90%. Like I'm there, I'm ready. I mean, you know me, I'm willing to put in the work, Yep. but the releasing of it has been terrifying and I'm still scared, but much less scared than I used to be. And the idea of following through on the promises that I've made to myself is much more rewarding than worrying about what other people are going to think or how they're going to take it or if they're going to like it. Yeah. Yeah. That's all sort of reactive. It's all it's Yes. That's the perfect way to describe it. All reactive. And I'm such a perfectionist. I'm a recovering perfectionist. Me too. Um, And so that uh, this year has just been kind of a debunking of my old self-limiting ways and facing those and figuring out a way to implement more powerful and empowering beliefs. Well, that's awesome. I, that's amazing. Can you, would you mind sharing a little bit about like what that process is like? Like, sure. Like, like recreating these beliefs and yeah, cause that's cool. It is. And I wrote an ebook and I'm going to give it away for free because what happened was I had this, I'll tell you the moment that it happened. So I was in my office in early March. I was coming off of this trip from the Midwest, I had driven um, myself and I drove my, I was with my 93 year old grandfather and there was a bunch of family drama. And after like 20 hours on the road, I got home and I was, I was just at that point of exhaustion where like you almost can't even sleep because you're so tired. And I went into my office and I sat at my computer And I just started sobbing, but it wasn't like healthy sobs like, oh, I'm sad and I'm acknowledging it. It was like deep pain sobs where no sound comes out. And those to me are always the scariest where like it's so painful. You can't even breathe. Really? Yes, exactly. And my husband was in the room because we share an office and I looked over at him and I was like, I'm not okay. I can't keep trying to make sure everybody else is okay when I'm not okay. Yeah. And my tendency is to want to be there and help 
everybody and I tend to put my own stuff on the back burner if somebody is in need. I know you're very much like that. (laughs) And I love that about myself because I think I have that compassionate capacity Mm -hmm. that that's what makes me who I am, but I haven't wielded it healthfully. Yeah. Um, and so at that point I was like, I need to see a counselor. I need therapy again, which I've done therapy before, but I need to, I need an adjustment here. I need to do something differently. And in our country, our healthcare system is so screwed up right now. We were paying like $700 a month for health insurance. And guess what? No therapist, no therapy until we reached like $8,000 for our deductible. So here I am like a middle-class American in such pain and I can't afford therapy. Like how messed up is that? Like what about people in lower income areas who are dealing with serious, crazy trauma and grief and they have no resources at all. So, What I did was I was frustrated, but at the same time, I was like, I still have to deal with what's happening here. And so I got quiet. I really limited my time on social media. I started diving into what felt curious for me. So I read some like really deeply spiritual woo woo books Mm -hmm. and I started journaling. And I think the most powerful thing that I did was allowing my space, allowing myself space to heal, but journaling the process of what made me feel normal again. And so that's what my ebook is about is it's six pieces of advice on emotional, on recovering from emotional trauma. And it's the stuff that I wish somebody would have told me. That's awesome. And there's nothing like, honestly, there's nothing super crazy about it a lot of it is getting back to basics and saying no if you feel like you are not ready to say yes so it's respecting your own boundaries um and going back to your question like what did I debunk I think one of the the most major things that I debunked was all this time I haven't been believing in myself and I have been subconsciously seeking my father's approval my whole life and making kind of major life decisions based on whether or not I think he would think that it's okay and I don't think I even realized that that's what was happening I think I was so used to that being my conditioning um but when I broke it down I realized all of this stuff that I've released over the last five years has been at 80% capacity because I was afraid to offend and I was afraid to have him disapprove, you know? And so that was a big aha moment where I was like, I don't want to, I don't want to dishonor my dad. I don't want to be disrespectful, but, I can't live my life based on whether or not he's going to approve of me. No, you can't. But, you know, from my perspective, I don't see how you ever could disappoint, you know, like, you know, (laughs) just like, but no, but I get that too. I have the same issue. Like my sacred cow is validation and approval. Oh, can we high five to that? We're high fiving. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) It's totally, totally. I mean, oh, I love those words of affirmation, but I have to like detox from it because I get so addicted to that. Like, I just want to, I want to please, I want to please, I want to please. And I want you to notice me. And I wonder, and maybe you can help me with this. I wonder if that's my own self-esteem issue of like, do I not value myself enough enough that I am seeking somebody's approval who historically it's 50, 50, whether or not they're going to approve of me, no matter what I do. And it's dependent on their mood. (laughs) <laughs> it's not even dependent on the facts. <laughs> so I wrote in a blog post today. It's like, it's like allowing the wind to dictate the course of your life. I'm going to wobble forever if I continue to go down that path. Right. And I'm unwilling. And it's not that I'm super angry. It's not that I want to have revenge. It's none of those things. It's simply taking back 
where I'm placing my value. And I, I have to be pouring into myself that I am reinforcing the value of who I am, not depending on others to reinforce that. Does that make sense? It makes absolute sense. Yeah. But it's so hard, as yeah. you know. Well, yeah. I mean, it's a habit. Oh. So, you know, yeah. breaking a habit, you have to continue to remind yourself yeah. time and time again. And, you know, really all we are is just attention anyway, right? Like that's yeah. just kind of what we are. So we get into this, you know, perpetual habit mm -hmm. of what we're focusing on and that becomes mm -hmm. this thing. And it just is a cycle that repeats and over mm -hmm. and over. And so you have to like, it's like learning It's any, you know, anything spiritual, you know, you, you become aware of your attention mm -hmm. and then you have to continue to do that over and over again. And it takes years before you can get to the point where you can really be present in the moment and, mm -hmm. and honestly make a real choice. Mm -hmm. You know, like it takes a lot of time because of all the chatter, all the habits that are Oof. built, you mm -hmm. know, in, in your mind. And, you know, like you said earlier, it's like none of us are perfect anyway. We're going to have to deal with those for yeah. a long time. <laughs> and let's talk about it so that other people can know it's normal. Right. Because I feel like this is what I've done in the past. So I'm assuming maybe wrongly that this is what other people do, but they listen to a podcast like this or they go on YouTube and see one of your videos and they think, oh, here's a guy who knows his shit. And the reality is, is yes, you do, but you're also human. Yeah. I'm also human. We still have all of these societal pressures and conditioning and beliefs that we've grown up with that sometimes we're not even aware of. Yes. So Are you I, calling me a hypocrite on my podcast? Never, <laughs> never, never. You know how much Only I love you. Only a little you. bit, right? No. Like, no, totally, totally. No, it, you're exactly right because... You know, we view people on a, and put them on a pedestal, like yeah. anybody who's an entertainer or, or mm -hmm. whatever. And th th there's really they're just doing their thing. If they're yeah. if they're gifted at something, they're just giving their gift. Yeah. Each of us has a gift that yeah. we can give that's just as special, just as valuable, just as unique as Beyonce or Britney yeah. Spears. Yeah. Actually, this makes me think uh, it's actually about time for us to take just a quick short break and talk to one of our sponsors. So hang in there. <laughs> <clears throat> Should I just start with like it's Britney, but <laughs> yeah, sure, <laughs> whatever you, <laughs> whatever you think. <laughs> we'll just riff a little bit. Hi, Owen. <laughs> I'm so happy to be here today. Welcome to the show, Br uh, Blipney. <laughs> Blipney smears everybody. Give it up for for Blipney. She's here Hi. on the show. Uh, she's uh, our sponsor. She's excited about Jacqueline's record, and she's got a, a few words of advice for all the listeners out there. I sure do. Um, first of all, did you see my post on Instagram last week where I was bike riding and I had on polka dots? It was really cool. And the advice that I want to give to Jacqueline is, um, 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 I'm sorry. What were we talking about? Uh, oh, advice. That's yeah. right. That's right. Okay. Um, dance and don't do drugs and um i'm so sorry i totally forgot what i was talking about oh that's great well uh that's uh, that's gonna that's gonna uh end our <laughs> word from our sponsor <laughs> we really appreciate it thank you blipney smears uh for joining us uh and being a contributor to the show uh <laughs> make sure you get out there and buy all that great blipney merch uh that you can find on <laughs> instagram <laughs> I'm sure it's all available on uh, Instagram because, <clears throat> you know, that's on what Instagram Instagram. So I'm sorry. That wasn't very good. No, it's fine. It was fine. <laughs> I'll chop it up. It'll be funny. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I didn't mean to. If you need me to sing, I'm, I feel like I'm okay. better at singing. Brittany. Okay. Stick around, guys. Uh, we will have one more probably. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> word from our sponsor a little bit later on in the show but we'll get back to how human we are what a hypocrite i am and <laughs> Owen, that is not what i said no 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 i, I think it's funny and and it, it, you know because we all are a little bit it's so easy like for instance right like, i'm a coach right like i yeah, coach people yeah. which i think is like the stupidest word it's like hey i'm a coach you know but anyway but i do I, but it's so much easier for me to have perspective 
on someone else's situation. And yeah. you know what? It's really we easy need for it. them. Exactly. We do need yeah. it. It's also really easy for them to have perspective on my situation. Yeah. So, I, you know, I talked to my friend Sean. And he's amazing. He's 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 my coach. You know, he's yeah. hilarious. He's been a stand up comedian for years where we write together. You know, he lives in uh, Northern California, but we talk at least once a week. And it's just kind of a thing that we do for each other. You know, it's like um, people who read tarot, for instance, like, yeah. or, or read the birth charts or something. You're not supposed to read your own, really. Like you should get somebody else to do that because of the perspective thing. And I think <clears throat> asking for help in our culture is so often considered weak. But mm-hmm. I think it's a strength to be able to say, I'm not an expert at that. I'm going to hire it out. <laughs> not only that, but I just, I love working with people. You know yeah. what I mean? And I have to yeah. figure out, because my <clears throat> issues too, with this, the, the approval seeking and validation and all yeah. that is like, I can find myself in a situation where I'm creating all the stuff and trying to provide for a community and just giving and giving and giving. Mm-hmm. And, <clears throat> you know, I wind up not giving myself the, the tools and the, space and the yeah. rest and all of those, the things that I personally need, you know, in order to be healthy and be continuing to put myself in a position to contribute and, and all of that kind of stuff. So, you know, I joke about it in a way, but in, you know, we're all a little bit hypocritical, you know, and if you look at anybody who's like Billy Graham or whatever, like some, some sort of figurehead mm-hmm. for some sort of movement, mm-hmm. like it's so easy to point out the inconsistencies with the teaching and the person, but we need to pull those things apart from each other. It's not about the person. And it's I not think about we the need performer. to make it okay for people to not be perfect. Exactly. And to stop idolizing mm-hmm. humans. Mm-hmm. Like, should we start a thing? Like I want to be a non celebrity. Yeah. I want to be successful in what I do. I want to make money making music and selling my writing because I genuinely believe in it. But I don't want to be put on a pedestal. You want to be a non-influencer. Yeah. A, a normie. That's what they call it. A normie. A normie. A normie. <laughs> Honestly, normie though, like, I want to be able to have real, genuine conversations. I don't want... I don't want there to be this veil of like, I have this magic sauce because I can do X, Y, and Z. But I think that's what happens. It is. Isn't it it what happens? Like I look and and I'm guilty of the same thing where I look at somebody I admire and I'm like, oh my gosh, what were they born with? Right. Um, But we can choose to hone whatever talent we want to hone. Exactly. You know, I recommend finding the, the one, the, your real gift and honing that, you yeah. know, but, but you could do whatever you wanted to, you know, it doesn't have to be your goal. You could pursue any number of things, but you know, it's like there used to be this, uh, sort of veil that shrouded comedy, for instance, like Lucy, uh, uh, Lucille Ball would say like you either have it or you don't Ricky. Yeah, <laughs> absolute bullshit you know she just yeah. wanted to seem she wanted it to it's it's kind of like saying well hermetic magic doesn't work you know yeah. so that you can just do hermetic magic in your back room and nobody mm-hmm. everybody else thinks it doesn't work because you don't want sure. them to find out it works because then everybody would be doing it and isn't that I, I mean I don't want to interrupt you there sorry did I interrupt Jesus you? Christ <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to interrupt you because I I value what you were saying. I was just going to riff on what you said. Please. Can I? Yeah. I think that's an ego thing. Yeah. Where it's a we want to feel special in some way. And like what we do is totally irreplaceable. But the reality is, is like, I have a good voice. There are millions of other people that have good voices, but also... I'm unique Mm -hmm. and nobody's going to be able to sing a song just the way that I can. And I, I think that there's a balance between leading with your ego and being like, Oh, nobody can do this like I can. Or I mean, people can make music all over the world, but I'm not going to be threatened by that. No, you shouldn't be. It's silly to be threatened. It's like, look, nobody's for everyone. Yeah. Yeah. Nobody's for everyone. Yeah. It's like 
some people are going to love your music. Not everybody is going to resonate with it. You yeah. Know, when you use a fun new age term, uh, you know. I love uh, the word resonate. <laughs> reson- it really resonated with yeah. me. You know, I was getting coached and my coach was resonating with me. And, and we were vibing. We were talking about consciousness. And Owen's energy <laughs> is so high vibe. Care bear energy. That's yeah. what I've got. I floated out. <laughs> <laughs> I levitated mm-hmm. into the heavens. <laughs> but yeah, like, so nobody's for everybody. So, you know, I'm trying to do comedy. You're doing music. You can't expect the whole world. Like some people mm-hmm. hate Beyonce. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, I don't know how or I don't, who. I don't but... know how either. <laughs> but that's not for me to know. You yeah. know, like some things. Yeah. It's, it's just... true. I, I mean, there are so many different types of people. I actually, I was having this conversation with somebody at lunch today and I was talking about how I've just come to the conclusion that there are so many people on this planet and people have such differing levels of awareness that we're all kind of living in different realities. Mm -hmm. We are. Um, And that's okay. I don't need to have everybody understand me or like me or approve of what I'm doing. It's okay. Yeah, it's okay. And I think that really helps with that approval, uh, seeking, validation, seeking Mm -hmm. sort of the sacred cow that you and I both struggle, have struggled with at least, you know, and hopefully, you know, that's something that we can, because it's not, because it, you know, it shouldn't be, it shouldn't be reactive to that either. Like, well, well, damn it. You know, you know, I'm going to make sure that I just come out like as a force and like start bulldozing. Mm -hmm. That's not, that's reactive to the issue at hand, you know, and so Mm -hmm. it needs to be from a place of true authenticity, you Mm -hmm. know, where you're grounded in you, in who you are yeah, and you're just giving what you are the most authentic. And at that point, you know, you're not, there's no motivation to get back or for vengeance or spite Mm -mm. or, you know, any of that. It's it's just pure. That's low vibe. Yeah. That's (laughs) so so low vibe. I don't do low vibration. (laughs) Do you have any bougie water for high vibration? (laughs) It was like prayed over by a monk in Japan. Yeah. With the holy water that, yeah. You know, the crystalline stuff is pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, was it Matsumuru? Something. Yes. I'm very bad at pronunciation, so oh everybody gosh. out there can just understand that. Yeah. There's a whole catalog of podcasts where I mispronounce people's names. I like that. I think it's good. I think it's good, too, you know? Uh Whoever Matsumuro is, is, <laughs> he is fine. He doesn't need me to <laughs> pronounce his cares. name proper. I hope he doesn't no, care. And I if you pronounce cares. my name different or forget my name, I don't care either. Yeah. You know, that's one thing. I, I hate it when people <sighs> get all mad and huffy and puffy. It's like, hey, what was your name? And you're like, ah. I know people. I, I think people are. They take themselves very seriously. There are a lot of like prickly people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you rub them just slightly the wrong way, you're going to get... I'm lucky to get rubbed at all. (laughs) This guy's getting rubbed the wrong way. He's all pissed off about it. I don't think that that's really a fair uh, complaint to have. You know what I mean? Like you, you... Ladies owns just ready to get rubbed. Whenever. I just need a couple of, you know, back alley makeouts. I'll be good to go. <laughs> I actually did meet somebody this weekend and as you know, we hung out like in a, fr- a very friendly way, but it was really fun. Was there a back alley makeout session? There might've been a little bit of kissing, but <gasps> not much kissing, just a little bit. And just, and mostly just good hanging for you. out. And, yeah, it was nice. Did you pack good lip balm? I, you know, I soft kissers are key. Yeah, I, that might have been the problem <laughs> between that and the mustache. You know, like I think that maybe that's why we didn't kiss very much. You know, tickle. <clears throat> my lips were dry, and you know, my mustache is very prickly. So between those two <laughs> things, I know that you know I need to really moisturize. You actually have the most well-groomed beard I've ever seen. It's just naturally. Like that. Yeah. I mean, it just Seriously? grows like a chia pet, you know, like basically. Your beard is so full and thick. It is that. I mean, my whole body, like you should see my shoulder, right? Like my <laughs> shoulder is full and thick too. Everything I have is very hairy. And, uh, but yeah, just I'm trying very to. Manual, manly, <laughs> very manly. 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 Man, very manly. <laughs> see, I mispronounce stuff all the time this, too. I'm going to, I'm going to forgive you. I'm going to forgive Thank you for you. that. Yeah. That's so high vibe. <laughs> <laughs> That's so high vibe. But yeah, no, I, it's, it's interesting. I, I think the world is changing. We are leaving the guru behind. And I think that's why, yeah. you know, 
I'm in the position that I'm in where I'm moving forward. I'm very uncertain in a lot of ways and not exactly mm-hmm. sure how I'm going to go. And I think that's kind of the fun of it though, right? Like when it's all determined and you know how it's all going to shake mm-hmm. out. What would be the point? That would suck. It would that I mean that takes all of the excitement and the lessons and the and that's the juicy stuff. And that's the way the world reorganizes around you yeah. that you can't predict yeah. or understand where you're just like, well, let's just see how, you know, what opportunity comes, you know. I've been doing some pretty outlandish exploits over the past year, you know, like from going from working on TV show to Impractical Jokers Cruise and being an MC on that and then going to, <laughs> you know, uh, Coachella after that. Yeah. And then uh, Kanye's church service. Yeah. All of it. All of it. And then, you know, to Spain. You know, yeah. it's like these things are just yeah. like, this is nothing that I planned. Yeah. That's not how it worked. Yeah. It's just like, I, I vision it like a, like a faucet mm-hmm. that's just like dripping possibilities Mm. and so every time the drop comes you decide whether or not you accept that Mm -hmm. or you pursue it yes or no and then is it a positive or a negative uh, event yeah so you can say yes I'm gonna I'm going to pursue this it's a positive event and then you go down that path and your suspicions are confirmed Mm -hmm. whereas if you're like I'm gonna go in my shell and you know I'm gonna avoid this and this is a bad then it is and you choose. Yeah. And that's what like choice is all about. Yeah. You know, and I think we're quantum. creating our reality so often. Yeah. All, all the time. Nanoseconds, nanoseconds. Yeah. Like really it is that way. Like when I was in LA, just, it felt like mushrooms were blossoming in my brain or something. Like I Did was you just, take some mushrooms? I or? didn't, not in LA. <laughs> um, they do have all sorts I'm of. I'm sure great psych- psychedelics <laughs> there. They do have all sorts of. <laughs> interesting uh substances out there <laughs> for consumption but like uh yeah no i didn't take any mushrooms i'm gonna go and do an ayahuasca ceremony uh pretty soon in i Toronto. can't wait to hear how that goes it's supposed to be like um like living in the like being awake in the dream world and the material world at the same time so like a lucid dream kind of like a lucid dream in reality wow yeah. so there's a lot i really need to like work on my intention for that and and like I'm oh gonna have will to you do eat. a podcast afterwards i'll probably like do share one your yeah we're supposed to go do like a crystal skull meditation afterward yeah of I'll probably... course because who doesn't do a crystal skull meditation after they do ayahuasca and, who, and, who, and again like i had no plan of it was just somebody yeah. who said hey do you want to come and do this and i'm like so yes and it's an advantage <sighs> I think what's so cool is, and this goes back, so this is a story from the Bible, but when the Israelites were going into the Red Sea and they wanted the water to part, God said, you have to step into the water first before the water will will part. And I always think about that as like a leap of faith. Yeah. You have to start on the path before things can happen. You can talk about it all you want, but until you start putting one foot in front of the other, don't expect anything to happen because you're not showing up for yourself. Right. It's when we take that leap of faith, when we step forward into the water, that to me in my life is where the magic happens. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, taking that initial, making that move, choosing yeah. is like an action. Mm-hmm. You know, you are going in a direction consciously and you're saying this is you know i'm going to pursue this Mm -hmm. and at that point then the universe starts to yeah to react and move on your yeah conspire and i love the word conspire because it feels a little dangerous it does feel dangerous it's like i want to jump on the back of that motorcycle yeah and i think my natural personality like i love adventure i love change i love the unknown and i love the idea of like a million helping hands going, wait, this is your dream? All right. What can we do to help? Um, And that has also been my experience, as crazy as that sounds. No, that's been my experience too. It's weird. Like, and the things that you pursue or the, or the situations that you try and control Mm -hmm. always blow up in your face. Always. Every single time. But the ones where you allow them to sort of iron themselves out. To be. They come about more effortlessly oh my gosh that was like what working with you felt like just very flowy and easy i had a blast working on 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 that stuff and uh, i know you're having recording more stuff now yeah. and which is really exciting yeah um but you know i, th- I feel like we really had some 
pretty magical moments. Oh, there. we did. We used totally. some analog tape, and we did. Oh, I love like, that part. Some weird, on the moon. you know, some weird yeah. recording techniques and stuff. Mm-hmm. And I, you created so much space for me to create. And when you're in an environment where you're experimenting, if somebody is pushing you or pressuring you, it's really hard to create. And you were so patient and so kind, and you held such open space for me to kind of figure out what I needed to do next that it was just a very easy experience well force is never going to give you the the outcome that you want no ever love love can't be forced and love and we have creative... to love our way into things yeah, right yeah. and love other people into things we can't fix people we can't rewire them mm-hmm. we can only love them into yeah and allow them to be and they make yes. their own choice stop trying to control them yes. because you're wasting so much of your energy at that point Ooh, i've gone love down that and, path. And, yeah i mean we think yeah me too but like mm. love and creativity I, I, that's the same energy to me you know mm, and it's like yeah. when we're together and we're you know having fun and we're joyous and jubilant and joking around and yeah. you know god i mean we had some really goofy <laughs> moments <laughs> Sure. Yeah, we did. <laughs> yes, we did. You know, we talked about farts and all kinds Tons. of stuff. Tons. Yeah, you know, and, and and really had a good time with it. And there wasn't this this sort of, uh, I guess, like like heavy cloud of, of pressure, you mm-hmm. know, where, and I felt that. I know what it's like to be a, cr- yeah. a creator uh, with that heavy cloud of pressure. Oof. And I also know what it's like when it lifts. Yeah. And it's day and night. You can do your best work when it lifts. Yep. It's hard for me to give my best work when somebody is pressuring me. Yeah. For sure. It and is. And you just, you do a really good job of holding space for people. Well, you know, I've read so many books like Psycho-Cybernetics and Maxwell Maltz where he talks about like you can't do anything unless you're relaxed. You you're know? such a smart, cool nerd. <laughs> Thank you're you. like cool, but you're also really <laughs> nerdy. I love the nerdy part about me. I don't care if I'm cool or not. It doesn't matter. You are cool though. But too. thank you. I appreciate yeah. that. You know, I'm, I'm, I take that for sure as a compliment. But like, I love, um, I just love the process and understanding what it takes. You know, it's like flow theory when you were talking about flow mm. at the beginning. Mm. There's a guy named Mihai Chicks Mihai, weird name, but he wrote a book called Flow, and he talks about how. <clears throat> and I studied it actually in college, oddly enough, but he talks about how like you have to find the, the right, like sort of balance between challenge and, 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 uh, and like fun and boredom, right? Like, so there's yeah. like these two different spectrums. Oh my gosh. And the way they cross so over. True. Yeah. So you should be challenged enough because if it's, if it's too easy, then you'll yeah. be bored by it. And, and you're not going to show up with your best work. Cause yeah. It, yeah, exactly. So you've got to have like some sort of impetus that's driving yeah. you, but also it can't be too overwhelming too, because if it's sure. overwhelming, then that will, that's all that pressure. And, and there's, then, there's so much fear there. Exactly. Yeah. Like you want to be taking a leap. You don't want to be leaping a mountain. Exactly. It's like one, one step at a time. Yep. And it's just finding that right, you know, I think, balance. I think too, what I thought that came up while you were talking was so many people now are talking about self-actualization, right? And becoming who we're meant to be, becoming who we've always become and being that authentic. People are reading Maslow now? Holy <laughs> shit. Well, I mean, watch out. I listen to a lot of podcasts. I read a lot of self-help books, but I think what I've come to realize is I love the idea of self-actualization. I don't like the term self-actualization because to me, actualizing something feels like it's off in the distance. And so I keep coming back to this idea of self-discovery. Cool. Like this is who I am and I may not understand or see all the layers, but I'm going to view it as an adventure and just be asking myself questions to uncover the different layers of who I am. Because beyond being a value to other people in life and what I feel like my secret sauce is, is taking pain and turning it into power or empowerment. I think my journey on earth is to discover and become the most authentic version of myself. And I don't mean that in a selfish way at all. Um, I don't mean it in a selfless way. It's, it goes back to that quote and I forget who said it, but the world needs people who come alive and the more we are our truest selves, I think the more we can light up 
and show others the way or at least give them permission to do the same. Yeah, because they're ev- everyone's experiencing their own reality. Yeah. So your reality does rub off. Like it's sure. like a it's like a, a one, you know, one part of yeah. consciousness. Yeah. Or whatever, right? Like the the collective consciousness, yeah. you know. And so, yeah, so the more people that start to do that, and this is what's so intriguing to me is like the Mandela effect, you know? Mm. Where it's like we look in the past and it's like the Bernstein Bears, the Bernstein Bears. I don't <laughs> I don't know what it is. But I love those books. It's yeah, those are great books, but like we can't remember, you know, it's it was Bernstein, but when I grew up, we call it we pronounce it Bernstein. Bernstein. And so like as we go forward and shift our attention collectively, the past can look different. And Mm. that's really trippy and weird, but that's how it happens because like the memory itself can be altered and your relationship to the memory. So it's like an address. So it's like, you know, you dial into the web or whatever. That's where, because your brain can't hold all this stuff. Like it's just, it just can't. So, you know, you can adjust your, uh, your sort of relationship to that memory, right? Like you could have a negative memory and turn it into a positive memory. You know, Mm -hmm. people have been doing that for like a long time. EMDR. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) But as we each, you know, self-discover and, and, and bring our light, you know, our, our attention and awareness to that, um, to that special thing about ourselves and illuminate that like the more hopefully that catches on and then more and more and more people and mm-hmm. then we start to shift our focus collectively and then at that point we look in the distance and we're like oh my god we were living in that world the yeah. Bernstein bears no it's the Bernstein yeah. bears or whatever right and like and it's so interesting we do kind of we need one another to move forward fully Mm -hmm. you know we can do so much on our own and decide so many things on our own and go down so many paths um individually but we need each other we really do oh it takes a village you know i mean it's like i i i don't want to do everything myself even if i could yeah because who am I going to high five when I get to the top myself you know what I mean that that sucks it's like it's so much more fun you know, to work on a project with you. And it's like, I was making music and for, you know, years and years and years. And, you know, and now I'm doing, and you're good at it. And I'm doing comedy now. And so that's more of an individual thing, but very luckily, still in the arts, very lucky to have like a supportive group, you know, with Kelly and Christine and everybody, um, to, to, to workshop with and to learn and bounce off of uh, different ideas, you know, in the comedy community, that's really, especially stand up. That's really <laughs> few and far between, but oh, like to work on an yeah, album with you. Imagine. Yeah. It's, it's just, it's awful. Brutal. <laughs> it's, sure. it's, it's murderous. If you've ever never been in a green room backstage at a comedy club. Oh my God. I, I mean, I've just listened to your stories ugh. and they just sound so uncomfortable. Just awful. But I would so much rather be in the studio with you. I'm like, Oh, well let's, mess with this tape effect and see what's going to happen. And then you're like, okay, cool. Let's try it out. And then we did it and it turned out really cool. Yeah. Some of the other stuff we tried, yeah, maybe didn't go that well the first time we found so much fun figuring it out. Yeah. And playing and collaborating and just having a think I think playing is the operative word there. Like, we've just played around yeah. and then came up with something that sounded cool. Yeah. And it fit the, fit the yes. mood of the song and yes. it, it was like, yeah, it, it worked out really well. And I think that that is really where self discovery starts is yeah. play. Yeah. You know, like totally. what is your gift? If you want to discover it, totally. just start being as ridiculous as you possibly can be as childish and mm. as absurd as you can. And whatever that comes, whatever comes out at yeah. that point, it's, that's probably a big key. To- I, I couldn't agree more. And I think it's being gentle, like stop judging yourself so much. Do you enjoy playing the flute? Do you enjoy making pottery? Do you enjoy I don't know, putting up ceiling fans, like whatever it is, that's okay. Don't yeah. judge yourself for and it. And feel it. Feel what it is that you want to do Yeah. because that is huge. Like I, oh, the yeah. biggest thing that I've learned over the past few months is I will never ever in my life go against my intuition again. I will never talk myself mm. out of it when it says, you know, <laughs> yes or no. It's very binary. 
But like, it's like, yeah. yes or no. And instead of being like, well, you know, I've got to do it because in all those justifications, right? Like I've done Which it in so, so many, easy. so many relationships. So yeah. Mm-hmm. But you know, and then business stuff or whatever. And it's like, well, I have to because of blah, 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 blah. Mm-hmm. And it's like, nope, nope. If you, if your mind is starting to tell you that you have to do something because of blah, 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 blah. And you don't feel like aligned in line with that yeah. then th- then something's wrong and oh, you need to... i couldn't agree more yeah it's I like i had a coaching call more. the other day and this girl was like i've been trying all this stuff and it's not working and i was like oh. okay well um how do you know it's not working you know and she was That's like a great well, question <clears throat> it is and and she what she's what she said was well, I'm, I started this business and it didn't, it wasn't successful. And at first it started going okay, but then it got harder and harder and harder and yada, yada, yada. And I was like, well, is that the business that you want to be in? And she was like, no. Uh, And I'm like, well, my definition of success is not you doing a business that you want, you don't, you didn't want to do from the onset. Yeah, That's not successful. That's not fulfillment. We want you to be in line with yourself and doing something that you actually enjoy. actively enjoy and you get a flow state out of yeah and you it is fun you know and yeah. of course there's going to be challenges and you're going to have to pay bills and do stupid shit that's mm-hmm. not very fun mm-hmm. and that's part of the process but you know the majority of what you do should be you know should make you feel good you should oh, feel i totally agree but those like fall on your face moments are vital too because sometimes the path to who you are is paved with who you are not Yeah, you have to. I mean, that's part of life. I think people are so fearful of failing that they don't try in the first place. Yep. I mean, I have personally failed at so many different things and they're not like huge, you know, crater size failures necessarily, although I would be happy to talk about them if they were. It's just, you know, I I made a move and that was not the right move or I spent a lot of time doing something that was not aligned with who I am but all of those things they produced this soil that was so rife with life lessons that I'm so glad that I did those things that I failed at yeah you know I wouldn't be where I am now yep Um, it's not a failure it's just part of the it's it is and it's to me whether you call it failure or not I don't really care what you call it I think the point is to fail forward mm-hmm. and go, I'm not going to quit now Yeah, because this is uncomfortable. Well, you know, it's like us being in the studio and playing with the tape thing. And some yeah. of the stuff we tried didn't work out at first, but it led us to the thing that eventually yes. did work out. Oh, and isn't that, I mean, I feel like so many of us stop on that first try where it didn't go well. We have to just, if your heart is in something... And you have that gut reaction of like, this brings me so much joy. It's worth it to continue to try and fail and try and fail until you do figure it out. Because you will figure it out eventually. Yep. You can't it's not. Worth, it's yeah. worth putting in that time. It is. Yeah. yeah. And it can be frustrating. But even the frustration has a silver lining because you learn what you need to learn for that next step. You know, I like in my ebook not to spoil the ending, but to spoil the ending a little bit. Like I (laughs) wish I could give people a timeline for grief and for healing from emotional trauma. I would love to be able to say, Owen in three months at this time of day, you will be healed. Yeah. But the reality is, is everybody's a little different. Sure. And we're all going to have to take these leaps of faith and trust that healing will happen. Success will happen as long as we continue to show up. But if we don't show up, we can't expect anything to occur. Yep. And nobody's going to do it for us. No, they're not. They're definitely not going to do it for us. And you know, we just need to be comfortable being a hypocrite for a little while (laughs) 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 and just, but who cares? Right? Like own it, like fuck it. Like, yeah, I'm a hypocrite, you know, or like, I'm I don't always do the thing. You know what I'm saying? Why do you feel like you're a hypocrite? I'm just, using that word because it's such a strong word yeah. to sort of just take all the, you know, excess, you know, desire and, mm. and, and, and compulsion to be this thing. It's like when you're talking about failing and mm. that's, that's where the, that, that vulnerability, that's where the good stuff comes from. Oh. And so allow yourself to just fuck up, yeah you know? And that is, that is that like, 
hypocrisy, right? Like, cause I'm, I'm going to do this thing, but then you undercut yourself sometimes, you know, you yeah, make a mistake. It's so human. It's okay. It's and so, so human. When I say hypocrite, I don't mean it in a derogatory way. Yeah. I just think it's funny. Cause you know how I feel about you and I like, I all automatically want to be like, Oh, and you're the coolest person that I know. <laughs> well, I don't mean like, you know, be like the, you know, the biblical sense of like sure. the person who's got the beam sure. in their eye and they're talking about the speck or whatever. Yeah. But you're talking about dichotomy. Yeah. I'm yeah. just talking about being human and, and allowing yourself the freedom yeah. to like, just, I'm a happy person, but there are days where I don't feel very happy. Of course. There are yeah. days when I'm heartbroken, yeah, but totally. you know, my heart, my, my broken heart is open. So, oh, and you, you have one of the most, I want to make sure I'm close to the microphone for this because I'm moving around. Oh God. Um, you have one of the most open hearts and you are so, you're just a very genuine heart on your sleeve kind of human. I can't And I help think I that's a rarity. Yeah, I think you are too. Uh, I am. I will say. And yeah, I have no poker face, but I do a lot of like uh, just really... Uh, focused energy work on my heart itself mm. and uh i think that i i recommend it because there's a cha- there's a channel and a flow there that like when i say care bear stare like i'm half joking but i I'm loved that gif you sent me the also other day. dead serious yeah because something something's happening there that's your electrical yeah. chakra center yeah like that is there's more power there than there is in your brain or your root chakra or wherever. Yeah. So like really feeling the flow of energy through there. And of course there are the energy meridians that go up and down. There's all these different mm. things that you can learn about and focus on. But you know, I feel like it's very apparent to me that you lead with your heart. Very, very apparent. I think you're really good at that. I'm learning to be better. You know, it's like, and I have led, but also I've also done that thing where I, talk myself out Ooh, of you or, outthink it yeah yeah, yeah. exactly i'm so, good at that too yeah so i've done that <laughs> you know as well and um but yeah uh god this has been such a good conversation i feel like we could go on forever yeah um but let's talk about real quick just uh let everybody know where they can find you and sure and all that good stuff sure um so i am on all the social media channels, Jacqueline Steele on Instagram and Jacqueline Steele on Facebook and some iteration of that on Twitter, although I'm not a big Twitterer. Yeah, I don't um, tweet either. I know. It's just not my, it's not my medium. Um, and then JacquelineSteeleInternational.com is kind of my hub and that links to everything. And then the ebook, which will be free, will be on my website, JacquelineSteeleInternational.com. And then all of the music will be sent out via that vehicle as well. So cool. that's so kind of all the, there, all centralized. Yeah. It's easy to find. I think that's great. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I'll make sure to provide links for everything. Thank as you well. so much for inviting me on your it's podcast. It's my pleasure. Thank you for having me. Uh, Thank you for coming. Of course. It's my it's my pleasure. Dude, uh, Anytime. Any, it's awesome. I just believe in what you do and well, thank adore you. you as a human. Well, so I feel anything the, I can do. The same way. Know. I feel the same way. Anything I can do, please. And yeah, everybody out there, um, uh, you know, uh yeah. Bootsy Greenwood, Bootsy Greencast, this is gonna be <gasps> called, I guess. We're gonna call it that. Yes. And uh, you know, you can find it on YouTube and this uh podcast. And yeah, hit me up. Tell me uh, what a hypocrite I am and uh, (laughs) give me unsolicited advice. Lots and lots of unsolicited advice and tell me what I should do and who I should have on. Tell him how beautiful he is and give him some. Give me some beard compliments. Yeah. Lots of beard compliments. I mean, I don't know why you wouldn't get beard compliments because you really do have like the perfect man beard. (laughs) I mean, the thing that gets it gets poofy on the sides, you know, by the ears. And that's when I start to look like a bum. And then the mustache. I, I feel like you're just so quaffed. The quaffed? beard is quaffed. It's like a fucking awesome word. Yeah, it is an awesome word. Wow, quaffed. I, I'm going to have to look that up after the I have the show. a word of the day app that I am so into. One of my last, one of the last words that I learned was balkanize. Oh, wow. So cool, right? Hmm. It's when what things it are broken into separating factions and oh. they're at war with each other. Interesting. Yeah. Wow. Like a, like a like a church like the Balkans oh like that part of the world when it was fractured and then there were warring segments that makes sense I know so my goal is to never balkanize anyone (laughs) (laughs) no more no more balkanize and go around with a coiffed beard 
Yeah. As much and as don't possible. be a cerbic. And don't be a cerbic, whatever the <laughs> hell that means. I know. These words are so cool, though. They are cool. Yeah, you go words. around using them in conversation, and people are like, what the hell is up yeah. with this chick? <laughs> but She's so high vibe. <laughs> she's so high vibe, tribe. All right. Well, uh, one last word from our sponsor before we go. We really appreciate it, guys. It's going to do it for Bootsy Greencast. Blipney Smears is going to tell you what's up. Hit me, baby, one more time. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Oh, Bible, Bible. How was I supposed to know that something wasn't right here? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, uh. <laughs> Next time we'll have Celine Dion. Hey, thanks, everybody. We'll see you next time. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was fun. She is just a, a fun, awesome dime in every way. I love Jacqueline. Uh, please go check out her website, JacquelineSteel.com. And as promised, here is a version of Mississippi Center. There's another one out there that we did that has drums and bass and all that you'll have to go to her website to hear that version jacquelinesteel.com and uh, here's a here's the acoustic version of mississippi center i'm wearing white but my heart is black got sin on my hands i cannot take back Lips are red, my eyes are green. The innocence that was was taken from me. What I've done, I can't speak about. I'm lost in shame and stain. Gonna baptize me Mississippi River Gonna walk